How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews back to get another review. And uh, it is Imperial Stout time in the form of Walls Petroleum. Um, I've seen this beer um, on the internet. Never had an opportunity to grab it locally to me. Um, and uh, was really interested because it's Brazilian. And you don't really get a ton of dark, huge offerings from South America when it comes to beer. It's not typically something you see. Usually it's, you know, sessionable stuff, smaller stuff. And uh, so it really intrigued me um, that they produced a big, dark beer. And, uh, you know, I've been looking out for it. Finally stumbled across it this weekend and picked it up and figured, hey, no better time than now to review it as far as what it says in the bottle. Um, up top here, first you got this insanely squished cork, which, I don't know, makes me kind of laugh looking at it. I like that for some reason. I don't know why. This whole bottle itself I, I'm a huge fan of, but we'll get to that in a second. It says up here, Bello Petroleum. Down here, Bello Petroleum. The Great Discovery. Brazilian Imperial Stout brewed with cocoa powder. 11% alcohol. Over here, uh, production date. L002FN, no idea what that means. I'm sure that's a lot number, and then FNN, I have no idea what that means. And um, over here we have, name for the Latin, Petrus, rock and oleum oil. Uh, petroleum is Brazilian crude oil in form of dark beer. Dark, rich, and complex, as the name says. This beer is loaded with cocoa, chocolate, and coffee aromas. Roasted notes and bready yeast, velvet, and smooth mouthfeel with a light carbonation, slightly hoppy and balanced with a high alcohol. Discover it with us. Other than that, you know, just important information and all that other stuff. And like I said, label-wise, from the crazy squished cork to the layout, to the bottle shape, to the labeling, the whole nine, I love this bottle. This bottle, and probably one of the reasons why it intrigued me, um, but just the art, the way it's laid out, everything about it, I dig. I'm a super fan of it. So hopefully the, uh, the beer kind of uh, shows and proves. I'm super scared to open this. This I would assume if you squish a cork like that, that means it's going to fly off at like a billion miles per hour. I'm guessing. So I'm kind of wary to get this sucker off. So let's see. Ah! So let's see. Huh. It's still there. Let's see what she has here. Oh, it's gonna wanna go. Eh. Easier than I thought it would be. I don't know, I just thought the thing was gonna blow up my face. Um, as far as the pour goes, let's see. Holy good God, that sucker is black. Uh, well, that is dark. Um, really no head whatsoever on it. A little bit of carbonation kind of coming through right now, but on that pour, I mean, that really had not much going on. You know, if it did have a head, it'd be pretty damn dark because you can see a little bit going on there, but yeah, let's see if we can force it to get a head on. No, see, I don't know. It's not a good sign. Hopefully it has a little bit going on. Um, color-wise, I mean, that's dark as dark could be. I'm not even going to try to glean any kind of color out of that sucker. It's a weird little cork, too. How about that sucker? Put that right back in there if you want it. Which is kind of weird. So, yeah. Weird head on it. Super dark. Let's see what the nose has to offer. I mean, that's cocoa powder. Do you say cocoa powder? That is dark chocolate cocoa powder. It's not dark chocolate. It's not this chocolate. That's not cocoa powder. It's got this really nice fluffiness to it. There's like super like espresso bean there. It's not even like coffee. It's like like a cappuccino espresso beany. A nice maltiness to it, or a nice roasted maltiness to it, but not overbearing. <sighs> that smells pretty damn beautiful. I'll tell you that right now. I mean, that smells like an absolutely fantastic beer. Equal parts roasted malt, coffee, espresso. And uh, cocoa powder. Yeah. Looks the part. Definitely smells the part. Let's see what she uh, plays the part. Cheers. I 
That's a good beer. That's a really, really... I mean, first off, it's the best beer I've ever had from Brazil. But two, that's a really, really nice beer. It's not blowing me away. But it's really nice. Got a slight bitterness there. Um, I don't think it's from the hop. I think it's kind of like a coffee bitterness kind of going on there. Um, they probably don't even make it with coffee, but... Yeah, coffee aromas. There's probably some coffee in there. Slight bitterness to it. But other than that, a nice, a dense smell feel to it. I've had thicker, but this is pretty nice. Um, super silky smooth, too. Dense, but really silky. Really nice, powdery cocoa, dark chocolates. Coffee's there. I'll be a little bit better. And that roasted malts is there, too. I mean, that's a really, really nice beer. Yeah. I'm a fan. Um, overall, rating-wise, I'd probably give it a... Hmm. Give it an 89. Just touching a 90. I should probably give it a 90. I'm going to give it an 89. Um, a little bit of bitterness there I'm not a huge fan of. And I wish it was just... Everything was tweaked just not. I don't want to crank it up a huge... But I wish just those flavors are just cranked up a little bit because it's a little bit unbalanced in body. Like how dense and thick this is, I think it's just a little, little bit more in flavor. So while it does taste really nice and it's pretty well balanced for that, that density, that thickness warrants it being a little bit bigger and bolder for me. So I'll give it 89 overall. Value and availability, eh. Availability, like I said, I couldn't really get it that in my area. So availability, I give it like a 3 just because I know where to get it. Value, really nice beer, 89, but you're talking about a three, 375 milliliter bottle that I paid, I think, just shy of $10 for. Slightly butthole puckering, um, not the best thing in the world money-wise, but um, as far as a singular experience, just to give it a, a, a try once. Um, yeah, not too shabby, but overall, value-wise, I have to give it like a five. I mean, it's a nice beer, but at that price point, it's a little bit junk in the shark. But overall, pretty damn nice beer. It's nice to see countries produce stuff like this that it's not what they typically produce. It brings something newer, something bigger, something bolder to the table. It's really nice. The chocolate's there. It's really nice. It's a good beer. If you have a chance to give it a whirl, you know, everybody drop four fifty on a bottle or split a bottle with somebody else, drop four dollars and fifty cents, give it a whirl. So there you go. Uh, yeah, eighty nine overall. Poo poo score on availability for me in northeastern Pennsylvania and value right in the middle just because of its price point for the amount you get. But it is coming from Brazil. How often do you get beers like that from Brazil, so as a one-off, like I said, it's worth giving a whirl. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did or you didn't or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, if you like, check us out on the internet. You can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and untapped. And Matt's the beers in all four of those places. And yeah, another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying a nice Brazilian Imperial Stout right now. And uh, hopefully you see you next time. Cheers.